once I got this, just pff, everything changed. So this right here, this is my camera bag. It's called a Lowepro Pro Tactical 350 II. And here's the thing, in reality, the context of this bag vary every single time I pack it. So today we're going over all my go-to gear that in 2021 will end up in this bag more often than not. What is up y'all? So everything laid out in front of me is the main components of my photography and this YouTube channel for 2021. If you see anything that I make, you can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be made with something on this table. Obviously there's going to be the occasional nuance situation where I grab a different lens or something like that. But for the most part, if you see it on the channel, it's made with something here and we're going to go ahead and break it all down. Now here's the thing with my camera bag and how I organize my gear and take it out with me. I'm pretty minimal with this. I do not like having a lot of stuff with me. If you've watched the channel for a long time, you're very aware of that. Typically what I like to do is plan out what I'm doing in my head and just make a decision before I go somewhere. So let's say I'm going to do street photography. I just make a decision saying, hey, we're gonna bring a 24 to 70 and we're gonna bring a 35 millimeter with the SL2 and that's it. That's what's going in the bag. And if I'm gonna go film a YouTube video, I make a different decision and I might say, you know, we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring the Atomos or we're gonna bring these filters. We're gonna bring the GoPro. Keep the bag minimal because I don't like having too many decisions to make when I'm actually out creating. And kind of a rule of thumb I keep for myself is if I can't fit it in the camera bag, there's no reason to bring it. Now obviously that rule changes if you're doing a major commercial project or a major paid gig. You can bring a Pelican case or whatever. Uh, but when it comes to more of the stuff on this YouTube channel, like when I went out to Death Valley, if it didn't fit in the camera bag, I wasn't going to bring it. First and foremost, the camera I'm using right now is a Nikon D 780. I got this about a year ago. Awesome camera. I'm using it for the studio stuff right now as well as the vlog stuff. I'm just used to it. I used Nikon for the entire length of me building this career and I still can't switch away from it because it's just too easy for me to use. But with that being said, I do want to start incorporating this Lumix S5 into my workflow. This is a really good camera. I'm just not used to it yet. So I'm starting to try to bring back some of the photo vlog things on this channel and this is a camera I'm going to slowly start working into that process. So as I start working this into the channel, you will know this is an L mount camera and that's one of the main reasons why I want to start incorporating into the channel because the Leica SL2 is also L mount and this is the camera I'm going to use for all photography on this channel. Whenever people reach out to me about this camera, I'm very honest with them and explain that this thing is just not like a plug and play camera. You know, I've had to really figure out how to use it, how to take advantage of it and I'm still figuring out how to make the most of it. So you'll continue to see me create with this on the channel. And this is also what I'm gonna use for any cinematic video. The video capability on this is fantastic. It's one of the main reasons I bought it and I do not regret it one bit. The quality is insane on that and I wanna start working in the Atomos Ninja 5 with the SL2. I've done some stuff with it, but I wanna start incorporating the Leica LUTs and some of the Leica looks that come with the camera. I gotta look into how to do all that. But that's what I keep in here. This is a little Pelican case for the Atomos. Uh, basically this is an external recorder so you put it on top of the camera it records instead of the memory card recording very useful and also you can put LUTs into this thing so you can kind of see what your footage is going to look like color graded GoPro I use is the GoPro Hero 9 black this thing is crazy Honestly, like you could probably film all the YouTube videos you make if you're like a vlog style type person with one of these. I really enjoy it. It simplifies the process a lot. And I got this little camera mount, hot shoe mount off of Amazon. I think it was like five bucks. So you can plug the GoPro on and then put this on top of your camera and do some POV stuff, which I definitely recommend. Even if you don't have a YouTube channel, if you have an Instagram and you're trying to show behind the scenes, that's an awesome way to do it. So the lenses we're using this year is the 24 to 70 Lumix and the 16 to 35 Lumix. I actually talked about these in a recent video, so I'm not going to waste my breath talking about it now. They're both awesome. They pair great with the SL2, and I'll go ahead and link that video down below. It explains why I enjoy both of these as social media lenses. And my small lens, which is kind of my day-to-day -day carry, I guess you would say. I can never remember the name on these things. It's the Summicron 35 F2. So I got this kind of on a trial basis, and within one day of using it, 
it, I decided to buy it. Just the optics and the image quality you get, it was so fantastic. Yes, it is manual focus, and because of that, I have this 45 f2.8 right here by Sigma, relatively inexpensive lens, but it's about the same size as this 35 millimeter, so if I want autofocus and just wanna cheat and be a little bit easier, I go with this one, and if I want the more, you know, photographer, artisan process of manually focusing, I go with that lens right there. We're gonna do a lot more with that. Before we continue, I wanna mention this, all right? So I got this other camera bag right here. And inside this bag is my old Fujifilm X-H1 with a 35 millimeter and a battery grip. I have not used this camera probably in over a year. So what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and give this camera away to one of y'all. You can just drop a comment down below, say something like, I want the Fujifilm or something like that and you'll be entered to, to get it. I'm gonna do a random number generator in a week. Hit the thumbs up button too on the video if you're enjoying it so far, but I just wanna go ahead and give this to someone who is gonna use it more than me. It's literally just sitting around. You'll get the bag. You will go ahead and get a charger for the battery as well and I'll include this little mini tripod for you. So, you know, it's just one of those things where instead of selling it, I just rather it go to someone who I know is gonna really wanna use it, but yeah. Fujifilm X-H1, it's a little bit of an older camera, but it still gets the job done, still has IBIS, and a 35 millimeter F2, which is actually a 50 equivalent, could be yours. So shout out to you guys. Thanks for supporting the channel. So whenever I ship this out to one of y'all, I'm gonna be using ShipStation, which is the company that I use for all my shipping when it comes to my brand, 1826, evanramp.com. Any product I sell, I use ShipStation and they are the sponsor on today's video. So quick intermission while we talk about them. So if you followed the channel, about two years ago, I started selling stickers on my website. It was the first e-commerce product I ever sold. Now it started out fine. I'd get a couple orders, I'd hand write the addresses, I'd take it to the post office, I'd sit in a line, no big deal. But as I started to get more and more orders and things started to grow, I could not do this anymore. So what did I do? I listened to podcasts, heard an ad for ShipStation, used the person's code, and started using them as my shipping software. So whether you're trying to build some giant company or you're just trying to sell stickers like me or operate an eBay store, ShipStation is going to take all the hassle out of the shipping process. It just keeps everything simple and as you get busier, time becomes your greatest currency. ShipStation saves me a ton of time. So right now, you can get a free 60-day trial when you use code EVAN. That's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in EVAN. That's ShipStation.com. Use code EVAN. So do me a solid, guys. If you do any type of internet shipping, try this out. Take advantage of the free trial. It's the first time they've been a sponsor on the channel, and I would love to have them back because I like presenting y'all with sponsors that support the channel but are also relevant and organic to everything I'm trying to build, and this is definitely one of those. So thank you ShipStation for sponsoring today's video. Now the other things that are gonna make their way into my bag is this right here. This is a little GoPro case, and inside this case, I just have like a mount for the Atomos. I have the HDMI to HDMI for the Leica SL2, as well as a giant battery for the Atomos. This is what they run on. And then I have an extra Leica battery as well. This might be something that doesn't end up in the camera bag. I have these little cases like this, you know, for this and for the Atomos right here, because it's nice to just be able to grab this and throw it in my car or bring it with me. And then say I need to use it, I can open it up, throw individual components in the bag or depending on where I'm making photos or making a video, just kind of gives me some more options. And another thing I always throw in the bag is this waterproof memory card case. I've talked about this before, put that in there, protect my cards. And then last but not least, I've talked about this before as well. I grab these anytime I'm going out to do photo or video and it always depends on the lenses I'm bringing. Most typically I bring the 77 millimeter and I bring the 82 millimeter right here. So basically inside of these are a bunch of filters. Check it out right there. Polarizers ND, uh, Pro Mist in that one, and then 88 millimeter or 82 millimeter. There's a few less. I think I have a Vector Star, Pro Mist, and a polarizer. Really all you need. And that's it. You know, pretty minimal setup. Obviously, I still have my Leica Q, which is an awesome camera, but I've been neglecting it a lot, and hopefully I start using it more. We're gonna see. I'm gonna keep that camera forever because of sentimental value and it's collectible, um, but I haven't been using it a lot, so I didn't even wanna include it in this video as a staple because it might not show up in a lot of videos. This is the main stuff, and before we get out of here, 
I actually asked y'all on Twitter for some questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer a few questions y'all sent me about gear. So how often do you end up using a tripod? I keep a Gorilla Pod inside my bag folded up in a large heavy tripod in the trunk of my car, but still rarely break them out unless for really long exposures. I am just like you. I can't stand tripods. I don't know what it is, you know, unless I'm going out into nature or I have a plan to do a long exposure. It's kind of like I said at the beginning of the video, if I don't plan on using the tripod beforehand, bringing it is not gonna really make me wanna use it when I'm actually out there. That's just how my brain works. I have to decide, yo, I'm gonna do some type of tripod photography today and go out with that intention and then I bring the tripod. So next question we got, not counting your phone and not having your camera bag, what camera and lens would you carry as your just in case you see something? Probably the Leica QP still, but also lately I've been carrying this little combination right here, the Sigma 45 on the Leica. Having this as like a daily carry camera gets a little bit stressful, you know, like you're in a coffee shop and you're like, hey, I'm just taking a picture of my coffee with this $6,000 camera. So the Leica QP is still probably my go-to for that type of stuff, but I can't lie, I've been using this a lot for everyday stuff. And you know, I might do the 16 to 35 on here as well, kinda just depends on how incognito I wanna be. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and answer that question with the SL2 and the 45 2.8. I wanna get more of these. I think Sigma is gonna do like a 24. That is gonna be sick. So I'll probably end up grabbing that eventually. The last question we got here is from my guy, David DME Optics. Make sure you check him out. What's a lens that you would never part with and would recommend to anyone who's getting into portraits or street work? My favorite 35 millimeter lens ever, which I haven't used in a very long time, is this Sigma Art 35. They still make these, it's a Sigma Art 35 1.4. Now it could depend on the camera brand or the camera that you're using, but this lens has just always been a go-to for me. It's sharp, it's contrasty, it looks great, it works well in low light, works well at night. The portraits, everything just works with this lens. And you know, this thing is like, what, $800, $900? I remember being completely broke, scraping up money to be able to buy this, and when I finally could, I had like a whole new world open for my photography. Early on in anyone's kind of career or passion or journey with photography, that is one little drawback, is you know that if you get your hands on a certain thing that it's gonna take you to the next level. And I know people like to say gear doesn't matter, but it really does in those early stages. You know, when you're using like a basic kit lens and you know, if I get that 1.4 lens, you know, it's gonna just open so many doors and be able to do these portraits with this bokeh, I'm gonna be able to tell such a better story. That is how I felt with this. Once I got this, just pff, everything changed. And then the same thing happened when I got a 14 to 24 millimeter, which is why I talk about how much I love this 16 to 35. You know, it's just something about certain lenses and certain ideas you have in your head. And once you are finally able to make them, um, you know, it can really change the game. And for me, street photography and portraits and like event lifestyle stuff was one of the things I really wanted to get into. And once I got this lens, it took all that to the next level. And obviously now I'll just go ahead and use this lens for that, which is much smaller. And who knows, maybe one day I'll pony up all the money and get the actual Leica autofocus one, but that's gonna hurt the wallet whenever I decide to do that. So that is everything today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for submitting questions on Twitter. Sorry, I can only get to three of them. I don't want this video to be super long. Y'all are the truth. Really appreciate you watching and supporting the channel. And I look forward to making a lot of cool stuff for you this year. See y'all next time.